The British Army's upcoming Challenger 3 main battle tank has become one of the most debated defense projects in Europe, not because of its technological innovations, but because of its astonishing weight and controversial design choices. Recent reports suggest that the fully equipped Challenger 3 could weigh as much as 76 tons, an unprecedented figure even among Western heavy armor. What makes this development particularly surprising is that despite the enormous increase in mass, the tank will still rely on the same engine design used in the older Challenger 2, raising doubts about whether it can maintain sufficient mobility and reliability under combat conditions. For decades, the British tank fleet has been synonymous with rugged protection and mechanical dependability. The Challenger 2, introduced in the late 1990s, earned respect for its thick Chobham armor and accurate rifled gun, though it was never considered especially fast or agile. The Challenger 3 program was originally conceived as a modernization effort to extend the life of these vehicles, giving them updated fire control, a new 120mm smoothbore gun compatible with NATO ammunition, and state-of-the-art digital systems. However, what was meant to be a cost-effective upgrade has steadily transformed into an increasingly heavy and complex platform that might end up compromising the very mobility that defines modern armored warfare. According to the British defense publication Defense I, the final version of the Challenger 3 could fatten up to 76 tons once all planned armor modules, sensors, and active protection systems are installed. That represents a dramatic 10-ton increase over earlier estimates, and nearly 15 tons more than the average weight of a Leopard 2A6, one of its main European counterparts. The increase stems largely from the addition of enhanced modular armor packages and an advanced active protection system designed to intercept incoming projectiles before they strike the tank. These upgrades, while boosting survivability, add enormous weight to an already heavy chassis that was never designed for such burdens. This development comes at a time when Western tank designers are already grappling with the growing mass of their armored fleets. Both the American M1A2 Abrams and the German Leopard 2 have progressively gained weight through successive upgrades, typically landing between 60 and 67 tons depending on configuration. However, the Challenger 3's projected 76 tons would make it the heaviest operational tank in NATO's arsenal. While the tank will certainly benefit from exceptional protection levels, the question remains whether its mechanical systems can cope with the extra stress of moving such a colossal vehicle across varied terrain. At the heart of these concerns is the engine. The Challenger 3 will continue to use the same 26-liter Perkins CV12-6A V12 diesel that powers the Challenger 2, an engine first introduced decades ago. This power plant, rated at around 1,200 horsepower in its current form, has struggled to provide sufficient torque even for the 65-ton Challenger 2, especially during operations in soft or muddy terrain. Reports from Ukraine, where several Challenger 2 tanks have been deployed, suggest that mobility problems have already surfaced under combat conditions. If the Challenger 3 grows another 10 tons heavier without a proportional power increase, it risks becoming severely underpowered, with a power-to-weight ratio far below modern standards. There were discussions within the British defense industry about replacing the old engine and transmission with a modern European power pack offering greater horsepower and improved efficiency. Such a move would have brought the Challenger 3 in line with contemporary NATO tanks, many of which use engines producing around 1,500 horsepower. However, those plans were ultimately abandoned, reportedly due to budget constraints and the desire to continue supporting domestic suppliers. The decision might save money in the short term but could create significant logistical and performance challenges once the tank enters service. Beyond the question of power, the Challenger 3's enormous weight has other implications. Transporting 76-ton tanks requires specialized heavy-duty transporters capable of handling the load, and the UK's existing fleet of tank transporters may not be adequate for the task. Bridges, roads, and other infrastructure may also impose strict limitations on where these tanks can operate, especially in Europe where road weight limits are tightly regulated. In combat scenarios, recovery operations could become particularly problematic. There is concern that standard recovery vehicles, 
such as the M88A2 used by the United States, might be unable to lift or tow the Challenger 3 in the event of mechanical failure or damage, forcing the Army to invest in new, more powerful recovery systems. The increased mass also affects the tank's operational range and fuel consumption. Heavier vehicles demand significantly more fuel to maintain mobility, which in turn places greater strain on supply lines. In large-scale combat, logistics can often determine victory or defeat as much as firepower, and a tank that burns through fuel faster than its peers may find itself at a strategic disadvantage. The British Army will have to consider whether the gains in survivability justify these logistical burdens, particularly when deploying abroad or operating alongside Allied forces. Supporters of the Challenger 3 program argue that the additional protection is essential for modern warfare, where tanks face increasingly sophisticated anti-armor threats, including top-attack missiles and drone-delivered munitions. The integration of active protection systems, such as those capable of detecting and intercepting incoming projectiles, is seen as a vital step forward. Yet these systems are not foolproof, they can be overloaded, jammed, or disabled by electronic interference. As such, they work best when paired with strong base armor rather than as a substitute for it. This philosophy of combining multiple layers of defense has contributed directly to the Challenger 3's ballooning weight. Critics, however, view the situation differently. They warn that excessive reliance on armor reflects outdated thinking, favoring protection over flexibility. Modern warfare increasingly values mobility, networked awareness, and modular adaptability. Tanks that are too heavy to maneuver quickly or deploy easily may struggle to remain relevant in a future battlefield dominated by drones, precision strikes, and rapid redeployment. Germany's planned Leopard 3 program, for instance, aims to maintain a more balanced approach, targeting a final weight of around 55 to 60 tons, far lighter than the British model. The Germans hope this will allow their next-generation tank to maintain agility without sacrificing too much protection. The situation also highlights a deeper issue within the British defense industry, the gradual erosion of domestic tank manufacturing capability. The Challenger 3, despite its extensive redesign, is fundamentally a modernization of the existing Challenger 2 hulls rather than a new tank built from scratch. Britain no longer maintains the industrial base to produce new armored hulls at scale, a capability it once pioneered as the birthplace of the tank during World War I. This limitation has forced the modernization program to work within the constraints of aging infrastructure and design architecture, further complicating efforts to introduce major structural changes. For now, the Challenger 3 remains a work in progress. It promises formidable armor, advanced sensors, and interoperability with NATO ammunition, but it also carries the baggage of outdated mechanical systems and logistical complications. The British Army hopes to begin fielding the upgraded tanks later in the decade, but the success of the program will depend heavily on how well the vehicle performs in trials and whether its powertrain can handle the added mass. If not, the Challenger 3 might enter service as one of the best protected but least mobile tanks in the Western world. In the broader picture, the story of the Challenger 3 reflects the complex trade-offs facing all modern tank designers, balancing firepower, protection, and mobility in an era where technology is advancing faster than budgets. Britain's decision to prioritize armor over agility underscores a belief in survivability above all else, but it also exposes the risks of relying too heavily on legacy systems. Whether the Challenger 3 will prove to be a resilient heavyweight or an overburdened relic remains to be seen. What is certain, however, is that this tank, like its name, will have to live up to the challenge of modern warfare in more ways than one.